title of the message is Searching for a Resting Place. And uh, if you've got your Bibles and you'd like to turn to Numbers chapter 10 and verse 33, this is the text verse for tonight. Numbers chapter 10 and verse 33. And they departed from the Mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. So the children of Israel were in the desert and the Lord was leading them in the way that they should go. He was searching out a resting place for them. And uh, God is also going before you to search out a resting place for you. A special resting place every person is special in God's eyes God says in the Bible that a person is much more valuable than a sparrow and he says that the same thing about a person compared to a sheep a person is better than a sheep he says and uh, God has got plans for you and he wants you to avail yourself of them in John 14 and verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. First of all, point one, you can't have true peace without the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. It is no coincidence if you are not yet saved and you are watching this video. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, would, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the Lord wants to include every person he doesn't want anybody to go to hell god knows that we're all sinners the bible tells us we're all sinners for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and we know in our heart if we're a sinner that we're on our way to hell so the question is how can you be saved from going to hell i mean the world is looking for all sorts of things but rarely do they get down to the nitty-gritty of the matter i mean uh, i didn't read the article but i saw something about elon musk and all these other supposedly important guys talking about ways of uh, extending the human life so it could live forever and that's not going to happen because only god can do those sort of things uh, they're going back to the tower of babel they're trying to take over the world from god so how are you saved? The Bible says you are saved by grace through faith. In Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, somebody mentioned that the other day. I think Brother Goran, it was his favourite verses. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Straight away, that means that 95% of all religions are on the wrong track because they believe that you get saved by doing good works. Even most people in Australia, even if they've had a religious background, will still believe that when you get and you stand before God at the end of your life, he'll weigh up your deeds. He'll weigh up the good deeds and the bad deeds. And if they come about equal, he might let you in, but you can't be sure. That's what 95% of religions preach. But the Bible says it's not by works at all. If it's, wor if it's of works, as it says here, we would be able to boast when we got there that we did it through our own works. That's not going to happen. The, the glory can only go to God. How do you actually get saved? What do you actually do to get saved? Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. No ifs or buts, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you believe in your heart and you confess, you ask God to save you. You use your mouth and ask God to save you. You see the, the letters R-I-P on a lot of graves and also on the side of the road where somebody had a car accident and meaning rest in peace. But there's no rest in peace unless you've found peace with God before you die. What about resting place for the Christian? Sorry. Resting place for the Christian is also very important. And I would say two of the most important resting places for a Christian is in their home and in their church. And the following applies to both. You need a resting place somewhere where you are understood, somewhere you can bring your hopes and your joys, somewhere you can seek shelter in the time of storm, like right now with COVID. Your home and your church might not be the Taj Mahal, but you feel comfortable there. Like that uh, saying, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. I remember a, a man in the office when I was working in Sydney Immigration Office, he had to go to Adelaide to do some training for the staff down there. And when he came back, people were saying, oh, how was your trip? And he said, terrible. He said, I went out to get the taxi from work to the airport and the cab charges didn't work in the taxi, so he had to pay himself. And the plane was an hour and a half late leaving. So by the time the plane left, there were no meals in the plane. And when he got to Adelaide, it was late at night and there was nothing open, so he couldn't have dinner in Adelaide. And that was the beginning of the story and there are other things as well I can't remember. But he basically said, uh, travelling is not as glamorous as what they make out. It's, uh, it's much better to just go home and enjoy the basic comforts of home. You can enjoy that in your home and in your church. You have freedom and peace there, a place where you know and feel God's presence and get his direction. For church, this is where you come to hear from God and to meet with your Christian brothers and sisters, which is so important. And we've really, that's really come home to us during these times of uh, lockdown and isolation. Next point, searching for a resting place in a husband or a wife. I know there's a lot of people in our church. I know there's a lot of people out there in YouTube land that are interested in that question, searching for a resting place in a husband or a wife. First, do an elimination process if you seriously want long-term rest in a husband or a wife. Do an elimination process. Chop off the things on the list that don't work. First of all, don't look for or don't entertain the idea of marrying an unsaved person or a disobedient Christian. It won't work. It will be disaster in the end. Don't marry somebody who it's going to be World War Three when you're in their presence. Every question and every comment turns into an argument. Don't marry somebody, sorry, marry somebody who, who will still love and support you through thick and thin, as it says in the marriage vows, in sickness, in health, for rich or for poor, and somebody that you feel secure with. If you already feel a bit doubtful with them before you're married, um, maybe that's the Lord giving you a little 
a few signs that you should put the brakes on. And it should be someone with whom you share a common view on the basics of life and the basics of the Christian life. You may not agree on every jot and tittle, but you do need to agree on the basics. Amos 3 verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? I think you know the answer to that is no. So then you need to pray and seek God's will. Don't sacrifice your service to God to find a husband or a wife. Pastor Wheat was telling us that when he was in the United States and he started a small church there, and the church stayed small for a long time. There was a young man in the church and he was very keen and serving the Lord, but he was getting itchy feet. He really wanted to get a wife. And he thought that he was never going to get a wife in that church because the church was too small. So he went to a, a very large church somewhere else and uh, he met somebody there and they got married. And a couple of years later, they broke up and got a divorce. Meanwhile, while this guy had left that little church, a really nice young lady had come along and joined up with that church and served there who probably would have been the perfect match for him. So uh, be careful. You don't go out looking for a wife and forsaking your place of service in the process. The Lord will honour you if you serve him. God actually still does arranged marriages. You hear about that in Asia, that they still do arranged marriages, except that often it turns out as a mistake. But God doesn't make mistakes. However, I'd have to make a comment. Be, um, be aware if you're seeking a human arranger for your marriage. Many people have got their own ideas, but uh, that may not work out for you. The husband or wife God provides for you will give you a resting place in the matter of who you will be together with for the rest of your life. That's important. Don't think of it as in modern terms these days is that you get married and then two years later you're, you're separated. Think of it as for life because that's how it is with Christians. That's how it should be. We can't have complete rest in everything in life. And it's also God's will that we don't have complete rest in everything, in absolutely everything. It might not be good for that. Remember, Solomon was described in the Bible as a man of rest. But in 1 Kings 5 and verse 4, it said, But now the Lord my God hath given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil a current. So he didn't have any enemies, any problems. God fixed up everything for him. It was all smooth sailing. So he, he sailed straight into sin. In Nehemiah 13, verse 26, it says, Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. So it, you, you, you need a little bit of a battle to keep yourself honest. But God doesn't want you to have a battle in the sort of things we talked about before. He doesn't want you to have a battle when you get home, when you arrive home from work. He doesn't want you to have a battle with your wife. When you come to church on Sunday, he doesn't want you to have a battle with one of the other Christian brethren. Those places should be places of rest. But the Bible says that the Christian is in a battle. We are soldiers. 2 Timothy 2 verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You will definitely not have rest as far as what goes on in this world, as we know from the last couple of years. Natural disasters, pandemics, wars, famine, financial collapse, hostile governments, loss of religious freedom. 
the Bible predicts many of those things as happening in the last days. <clears throat> um, I was watching some people doing some singing in, in Hong Kong in their church yesterday and they were singing with all of their hearts. Why is that? How come all of a sudden people in Hong Kong have turned their hearts to God so much? That's because they know that their religious freedom is about to go out the window. Communist China has taken over Hong Kong and they've torn up the contract with the United Kingdom. They're going to look after it their way. They're not going to give them 50 years of freedom as they were supposed to. So pretty soon they're going to close down the churches and ban people from uh, worshipping God. So the people in Hong Kong are enjoying it while they can and getting themselves ready. But the same could happen here one day as well. But even in spite of all these things, you'll still have God's inner peace to get you through these things. I'm going to conclude now, and uh, I'd like to conclude firstly by reading Psalm 46, verses 1 to 11, if you'd like to turn there. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 11. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And just to repeat the verse that I quoted right back at the beginning, John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would convict the hearts of anybody who is listening that,